Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Consciousness and Deep Sleep, Swami Savarpiananda. So, if I remember correctly, this is the time where we actually experience, I think, true oneness with consciousness, just because our karma, our bhakti, and our jnana is all silent. Uh, Swami... I can't remember his name, but he... I, I think he goes by Electric... Swam, uh, electric guru or something like that uh, he talks about the BMI body mind intellect <clears throat> and then the top one being Raja or uh, or uh, yeah Raja actually <laughs> meditation and he's talking about how you quiet the body you quiet the mind you quiet the intellect and you go to a, another state of Raja meditation and that's not your true state yet but then above that is Brahman Atman the true state meditation state and then your three BMIs, which is, then he has subcategories underneath to follow that. So I think deep sleep, if I remember correctly, this is where we genuinely are completely aware, which is weird to say, but let's go and get started. How do we know that there is consciousness in deep sleep? This is an important question in Vedanta. Why do we feel that there is no consciousness in deep sleep? You know where this question stems from? Sorry? It stems from an inadequate separation of consciousness and mind. Ah. We think we have understood what consciousness is, but we are still thinking about the mind. That's why when the mind shuts down, there is no thoughts, feelings, no ego, no activity of the mind. We think there is no consciousness because we still have not separated consciousness adequately from the mind in our understanding. Okay. When the mind is active, we feel its consciousness is there. When, and when we are awake and in this waking world, we feel it's conscious. Yeah, I mean, we are conscious very clearly. Even dreams, we feel we are conscious because we are aware of dreams. But when the mind shuts down, we are not aware of anything. No objects come before us. Just a blankness. We think there is no consciousness. It's just blank. What's blank? The object of your experience is blank. Blankness or, or the absence of objects. That is what is being experienced. <laughs> now why is it so difficult to, uh, to uh, acknowledge this? Because at the root there is this inadequate separation of consciousness and mind. Now, why is it so important to appreciate this? That there is consciousness in deep sleep in our waking state, you don't have to fall asleep to admit it. You have to uh, wake in, in our waking state, if we admit that there is, if we can clearly grasp that there is consciousness even when I have fallen asleep, the mind has fallen asleep, then we'll realize what consciousness is. Then the separation between mind and consciousness will be clear. In our I'm going to rewind that real quick. When I have fallen asleep, the mind has fallen asleep, then we'll realize what consciousness is then the separation between mind and consciousness will be clear in our understanding at least we will see that i am not the body i'm not mind also what awareness is in itself the pure subject a clarity about that will dawn that's why consciousness in deep sleep is an important subject in advaita vedanta now to deal with the particular objection it's an ancient objection that vedanta says yes there is consciousness in deep sleep because after waking up, I felt, felt that I had experienced complete peace. I did not know anything. I, I rested peacefully. So that is an experience. If there is an experience, there must have been consciousness. So one objection is, no, why should that be an experience? It could be an inference. I was not awake, therefore I guess I was sleeping. That's what he says. I was not. I didn't wake up, so I guess I slept deeply. I didn't wake up. So I was not awake, I was not even dreaming, that also has to be added. Therefore I guess I slept deeply. This is an inference. On two counts this is wrong. This has to be rejected on two counts. One is on the grounds of experience. Another one is on the grounds of logic. What is the grounds of experience for rejecting this inference? When we wake up and we look back, look back means think about our just preceding experience of sleeping. Uh, do we perform this kind of an inference? So, I fell asleep at such and such time and I had some dreams. 
and then I did not have any dreams. I was not awake. Therefore, I must have been in deep sleep. Do you perform that kind of a logical? Ex do you have that experience of um, performing uh, an inference, going through an exercise of logic just after waking up? No. Phenomenologically, what is phenomenology? Uh, tracking our experience. How did it feel? Think about it. How did it feel? Did it feel like you are doing an exercise in logic, <laughs> or did it feel? <coughs> did it feel like that? Uh, um, I was not awake. I was not dreaming. I guess I must have been sleeping. Therefore, I was asleep. Did you do that, or did you feel? I had deep sleep. I slept. You know, like we in English, I slept like a log. I didn't know anything. In Bengali, they say "ghumiye kada." I slept like mud. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because you have to imagine it's not like New York. It's uh, 100 degrees in the shade and 100% humidity. So if you fall asleep deeply in that kind of humidity, you'll, you'll feel like mud when you wake up. <laughs> so it's, notice, it's language which you find in every culture of the world. Which means deep sleep is something, a phenomenon known to everybody in the world. And all human beings, we experience this. I mean, I, even animals would experience it. So we, that we slept deeply, it's a phenomenological experience. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that we directly, subjectively experience, not logical exercise. Okay. On the grounds of experience, we reject that it was an inference. It's actually an experience. Hmm, you said subjectively experience. Is it still subjective when everyone experiences it and when we can confirm that it does happen? Now we can't exactly say, oh, it you know it takes this measurements, but we can say there's a portion of our sleep where we're not dreaming, and we're not awake. So we can objectively say that, you know, when we sleep, we get into that state. I, I don't know if sleep scientists have, you know, determined what period that is. I know there's, we go into a deep sleep for a short period of time. I don't know if they count that as REM sleep, but REM sleep tends to be when you're dreaming. And is deep sleep between REM sleep and awakening? Anyways, I, I, it's just weird that it says subjective. Is it still subjective? When Again, when a lot of people experience it? So what? Or if everyone? it's an experience, there must have been consciousness. <clears throat> How can you have an experience without consciousness? What experienced it? Who experienced this experience? of deep sleep. So there must have been consciousness. All right. Second, on logical grounds also we, we must uh, reject it. Why? Inference works this way. In ancient Indian logic, the inference worked this way. There is smoke on the hill. Therefore, I infer there is fire on the hill. See, I can see smoke, but I can't see fire. How did you infer? You saw smoke. How did you infer there's fire? Because in my kitchen, and at various times, I have seen smoke <laughs> and fire together. Wherever I saw smoke, there was fire. So and now I'm seeing kitchen. smoke. See, wherever I saw smoke, I saw fire too, together. I saw both. Now I'm seeing only smoke. It's so far away. But I'm inferring there is uh, fire. Or a more, um, a better example here in Manhattan. You don't see smoke on a hill too often here. But you see smoke in the distant. Um, and the fire trucks are there immediately, within minutes. How do they know? They don't see the fire maybe, but they see smoke pouring out of the top uh, floors of a, of a high rise. And so the fire trucks rush there because they know where there is smoke, there is fire. How do they know that? Because they have seen both together, smoke, smoke and fire. This is in um, Nyaya language is called Vyapti. English is even worse, invariable concomitants. Just it means the two things go together. All right. So what? Now you are carrying out an inference about deep sleep. What is what? Are, what inference are you carrying out? Um, in deep sleep, you are inferring there was deep sleep, and therefore there was no consciousness. Deep sleep, there was no consciousness. That's what you're trying to infer. Um, that, uh, or you go a little further back. You said that. I was not awake, therefore I was in deep sleep. That part we have dismissed, uh, experience part. So th you take this up. The deep sleep, there is no consciousness. But this logic will not work. Uh -huh. Why? 
So what is the logic in this? That in deep sleep there is no consciousness because that um, there is no experience in deep sleep. I did not experience anything. Therefore there is no consciousness. Uh, the sign of consciousness is that there must be some kind of experience. This is a blankness. But this logic will not work. It has to be rejected on logical grounds. Why? Because where did you experience both together? To say absence of experience means that there is no consciousness then you must have experienced sometime there is no experience and there is no consciousness together you must have experienced then only you can say look here is a case just like smoke on the hill here is a case deep sleep no experience therefore there must be no consciousness in deep sleep how do you know that in some case earlier you must have seen no experience and no consciousness together but if you have seen no experience and no consciousness together if you have experienced it there must have been consciousness <laughs> Huh. I don't know. He he's definitely an expert arguer here, but I'd argue the, the just the opposite. It's just sure fact that we can we cannot. How do I say? Um, <clears throat> even though we not experience it, we cannot confirm it either. Though you know, it's kind of like saying, um, I mean, I, I, trying to think of this stuff on the spot, especially examples that I've ne never thought about and how to communicate this thing. So so he's saying basically because we've never seen uh, non-experience and non-consciousness together that we cannot say that because it doesn't make logical sense. But what we can say is that any time that we've been conscious, we've always had experience, but we've never had non-conscious and experience or non-conscious and non-experience. I, I think that would be the argument presented is because every time we've always been conscious we've always had experience so those two are tightly close together in in what he's trying to argue against is that because if we don't have consciousness then we don't have experience <clears throat> but can you experience can you have consciousness with no experience has hopefully he'll get into that one now that one I uh, I definitely need to think about but I wonder if, because if you want to do the inf inference where you say you have consciousness but no experience then that'd be a very good argument you cannot establish that vyapti invariable concomitance going together no experience no consciousness you cannot exp uh, you cannot establish that without consciousness so the inference fails what, what, what comes of it? What's the upshot? In deep sleep, there is consciousness. Notice, waking, dreaming, deep sleep are not uh, dependent on consciousness. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep are the states of the mind. They are not states of consciousness. The states of the mind. Mind is awake, using instruments of knowledge, the sense organs, contacting a world, waking. Mind has fallen asleep um, and dreaming within itself without contacting an uh, external world, dreaming. Mind totally ceases to operate, deep sleep. Consciousness, illumining the wake, waking mind, illumining the dreaming mind, illumining the sleeping mind. Waking mind, experience of sense objects and of course thoughts. Dreaming mind, no experience of sense objects, consciousness reveals activities of the mind. Uh, there is re there <laughs> personal experience when you uh, many many times I felt that I need to go use the bathroom and in my dream I need to go use the bathroom <laughs> but I get what it's saying for the most part yeah especially the deep sleepers you can slap them in the face and they would not wake up for some weird reason really deep sleepers sleeping mind consciousness reveals the dormant state of the mind blank consciousness is one and the same <clears throat> so, um, still, he didn't create an example, to, unless I missed it, and let me know, of uh, ex consciousness with no experience. I guess that's kind of difficult to, to do, perhaps, because, no, maybe meditation, maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe that is the way to do it. Consciousness with no experience, meditation, when you clear the mind, you're clear your karma bhakti and jnana yeah when you clear all three of those perhaps then you can have consciousness with no experience 
there you go. Huh. I think I said that before, but I think that's the way. Let's see if it says that with only 13 seconds left. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> so he, he did get the example of conscious, consciousness with no experience. He's given smoke and then for fire because you've seen those two before. But you've never, he, he, I don't think he explained consciousness with blankness. Um, but what we can do to, for the, car, counter, the counter argument for his is the fact that we've, we've always experienced consciousness with objects. So if there's objects or there's experience, there's consciousness. And that's the reason why when we go to the deep sleep state, it's the fact that, well, if there's no experience, there must be no consciousness. There's no proof of it. It's just, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like a theory, you could say, uh, on there. So again, you know, in order, anytime that we experience something, objects, whatever it may be, there's always been a consciousness there, dreaming um, and waking. Those, th those two easily, and anyone could agree with that. Um, but when you go to deep sleep, that is where you have consciousness with no experience. So how do you prove that? And I think what I said by doing the three, quieting the three yogas, your karma, physical and mental actions, your bhakti, your devotion, your emotions, uh, and jnana, your intellect, your knowledge, your tr you thinking about things, I think. Knowledge. <laughs> Still kind of confusing jnana a little bit. But anyway, so you quiet those three and then get into a meditative state, then perhaps you can experience consciousness without experience. And I think maybe that would be the proof there. That's the, that's the best I can come up with. So that's something I've definitely not experienced yet. Well, I say that I, I potentially have maybe one time a while back in the purely by accident. I don't know what happened, honestly. I, I honestly, I think I just blacked out for the most part. <laughs> but anyways, I think, I think that would be the proof. So again, so again, video over with. Just to repeat real quick, recap. So um, I... To counter his argument against the fact that we've always experienced objects with consciousness and never have we, never has there been a point where we ever experienced objects with no consciousness and never have we ever experienced consciousness with no objects. But there's always consciousness with objects. <clears throat> you know, even if you're blind, you can still feel, as long as your sense organs are there, you are, you are, um, you are sensing objects. Now, the, the interesting one would be if you, for some weird reason, there's someone out there with no sense organs. It's just the brain consciousness. Again, I, I think I explained that with the last video. How would that be? That, that, that is a very difficult one because I don't think anyone out there is like that. And that might be scary. Because I think there's a dog that's deaf and blind and but they can still feel and there do you always have to be careful uh from the video that i watch you have to be careful approaching them because you can start them because they can't hear you coming and they can't see you coming so they can only feel you um the feel the air potentially or smell you perhaps but yeah so and i think the only way to probably truly prove that but it'd be I think it'd be nearly impossible for a lot of people well not impossible but very difficult is to quiet the three your your and sense in a sense your sense organs which is the, th the practice of the three yogas then do the fourth one Raja to meditate to the point of pure consciousness with no object let me know what you think about that one and if you have any other things you want to say I've read some comments about the last video recently and um, I'm glad there's discussions going on. <laughs> Anyways, this is my reaction to consciousness and deep sleep. So I'm myself, RP Ananda. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.